On today's video, I show you Linux Mint running on a Pentium 4 processor and everything else that went wrong in this video. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Initially, I was going to install Linux Mint on this Pentium 4 gateway tower right here. Unfortunately, about 15 minutes into the install, it just died. Uh, the power was still on, the fans were still spinning, the motherboard itself was dead. I couldn't revive it, I pulled every individual component and put it back one by one. Nothing brought this thing back to life. I took the CPU out and turned it on, it gave the exact same amber light on the front, no life whatsoever to the board here. I believe either the CPU died or it's got bad capacitors. None of them are leaking, none of them are bulging. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean they are good, but that's somewhere to start with a board that is 22 years old. Uh, early 2000 Pentium 4 boards were just prone to horrible capacitor damage. Uh, the next thing I did is I tried installing it on a Pentium 3 system that I have. That was painful. It was able to actually go through the install, but it just took so long. It, it was painful. I was sitting here, I was falling asleep between steps, and it wasn't going to make a good video unless you wanted to see me torture myself. Uh, at that point, I thought about scrapping the video uh, multiple times, but that was the first time I thought about scrapping the video and just going on to the next thing. Uh, but then I remembered I have this Pentium 4 motherboard here. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't fit into this case. Uh, the old Gateway Towers didn't have an I.O. plate that you could pop out. They were cut into the metal. And even though some of it is just covered by a sticker, it still wouldn't line up with this board's I.O. So I've got my little makeshift test bench right here. It is running a uh, external power supply, not the one from there. Uh, it's a PCI Express video card instead of the AGP video card that I would have had with that one. And uh, there's a few other issues that just plagued this whole video and I really didn't want to make it. I, I was about ready to scrap everything and just come up with something next week. Uh, I don't want to waste all that time, so at least I think I can show people some of the shortcomings I had this week, uh, some of the trouble I ran into, maybe you guys got ideas for how it could work better, and uh, maybe I'm going to help somebody here that's trying this for themselves. So let's get this thing powered on. First of all, you know, no case, no power switch. I just short those two pins right there. The fans are very loud at boot. Now we're right here at the boot. Now if I don't let this boot up and I just let it time out, I'll hit number two here. And what we see here is no bootable device. After my first install, it wouldn't boot. I, I was scratching my head over that one. I, I was looking into old forums. Uh, apparently with this legacy BIOS and the newer versions of Debian, they just don't talk to each other very well. Uh, there are fixes for it. I didn't feel like digging that deep into. Uh, I did find a fix though myself, and that's going back to the CD-ROM boot hitting number one to boot to the install drive. And then from here you would boot local drive and then grub loads. The great thing about that is I was able to get back on my feet and start tinkering with the system, figuring out what I can make in this video. Uh, the bad thing about that is you can't do as much as I hope you could with this system on a new OS. I was, I was trying to load uh, Steam on here. That wouldn't work because it was a 64-bit version of Steam. I could probably find the old 32-bit version and try that. Uh, I just... This whole, this whole experience has been very demoralizing. Uh, maybe I shouldn't work with Pentium 4s anymore, just go to the older stuff. But <laughs> it's, it's the easiest computer I had in my garage to dig out. All right, that took uh, about two minutes. So it finally loaded up. Uh, once it's loaded, it is pretty responsive. So let's close that out. And it does have Firefox. Uh, I did run all the updates on this, so everything is up to date as far as today. 
Okay, now that we got Firefox up, that took about 30 seconds, give or take. I probably jump cut it just so it wouldn't be, you know, 30 seconds of dead video of me staring at a monitor. So I'm going to pull up a video here. And it will load. It, it actually runs YouTube at about 360p. So it is usable if you wanted to, to play around with this. We are currently running at 360p. Let me unmute it here. So the, the audio does match the video, so that is at least usable. If you go any higher than 360, uh, you are going to have a lot of stuttering audio or stuttering video, and it's not watchable. Uh, it does work, though, with, uh, with this. Now, the other thing that you could do on here is because it is the updated version of Firefox, is that you can actually you know, check your email, Gmail, uh, Outlook, anything like that. You can check modern email without running into security issues that you would on an older system, typically. One of the other uh, brick walls I hit while doing all this was I tried to install Steam, and Steam requires a 64-bit processor. I probably could have dug around and found the old 32-bit version, and I just, this whole computer, this whole video <laughs> really, really kicked me in the rear end this week, so I didn't dig any deeper. Uh, I spent enough time just trying to get the audio to work. Uh, turns out that the little uh, Realtek audio chip on this thing does not work in Linux easily. Now, I could also try to find drivers with that. And from what I was reading on old forums is that it might still not work. It might be stuttery and it's just not nice. So what I did do is I have a Sound Blaster Live PCI card and that just works fine. It, I plugged it right in, it installed and just picked up right from there. It does have uh, like office applications on here. Uh, some basic internet applications, uh, Firefox web browser, Thunderbird, Transmission, if you want to download your torrents on this. You'd probably fill your drive real quick, but you could do it. Now, would I recommend doing this? Yes, if you're the type of person that likes to get the last few drops out of an old dry husk of a Pentium 4, then yeah, you should try it. Uh, it it's definitely neat to see what you can do with this thing. Uh, a basically 20-year-old computer with today's software. The fact that any of this works is a testament to the developers of LMDE and just how well their software is written. Now, if this works this well on an old Pentium 4, imagine what it would, how well it would work on like a 5 or 10 year old computer that you still actually have and use daily. So if you have an older computer that you're using on the, on a, as a daily driver and you need something and you can't afford to go out and buy a new computer, get Linux Mint Debian Edition. You might have to learn Linux if you don't know that already. But if you're the type of person that likes to tinker and you don't have a lot of money to spend, Linux is definitely the way to go. Now, would I recommend doing this on a Pentium 4 for daily driving? No. Uh, this thing was painful once you started digging anything deeper than Firefox. Uh, Trying to get modern music streaming on here didn't work. Uh, a lot of software that developers are making just requires 64-bit computing or processing, and that isn't going to work. Uh, if you need the basics, though, absolutely. If you just want to tinker with this thing, if you want to get Firefox running on here, by all means, go ahead. Uh, daily driving, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, this has been a short video. I hope you like it. I hope it was informative. Uh, I got to show you the worst week I've had trying to make these videos because everything that went wrong absolutely went wrong. Uh, I should be getting some parts in for the Apple II, and I'll do that repair next. But for now, this was a nice filler episode. I hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe. Uh, tell your friends, and I want to bring you content, uh, even if it's failure. So, <laughs> enjoy. Thank you, take care, and see you in the next one.